Thanks for having me, Erin. Of course. It's so happy. so cool to be here with you talking yeah. about human design, which is taking off and getting so much interest, I feel like. I know. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so you are a human design guide, a leadership coach, and you're also the director of programming here at The Assemblage, yes. which I'm a member of, and I yes. love very much. Um, but before we get into all your career stuff, um, I want to hear a bit, a little bit about you and your background and where did you grow up and what brought you to New York City doing yeah. what you're doing? So I grew up in Seattle um, and I went to school, I went to college on the East Coast and then I never left the East Coast after that. Um, and I think, you know, prior to all of this, I did a lot of study around like entrepreneurship and then I came to New York and I started working on a lot of startups. and. I like was so inspired by the companies and like the people that I was working with, but the teams were like totally dysfunctional. <laughs> and so I was just like, this is so weird, like how what team people do not know how to work together. Um, and then I sort of took off on my own and then I met somebody who introduced me to human design. And so I was really initially drawn to human design because of its application to companies and leadership and basically helping people understand themselves and the people around them on a much deeper level and like in a way that we just like don't always have access to. And so, and Human Design is actually what introduced me to the assemblage as well. Oh. I met the founders, I did sessions for them, they wanted to bring it to all their members, and then like, there was such a synergy between us that I ended up coming on and helping curate all the programming. Mm -hmm. And now it's like very full circle because now I'm doing Human Design for all the internal teams in the assemblage and beginning to do it for all the members. Um, but yeah, I think that I've, I'd explored so many different modalities and Human Design was just like the most practical and applied and grounded modality I found and so like I just knew that I had to share it. What kind of work were you doing before you got into Human Design? I was doing... Um, a lot of work, I mean with this, I was a lot of work with startups and a lot of it was around like community and business development, like for yeah. me it was all stuff just that related to people. Okay. Um, and so I worked full time at startups for a couple of years and then I also consulted for a bunch of different ones. But it was like all very, my strategy in human design is all about an invitation and so like all the opportunities that have come to me have been very weird. It's like not been like really? me applying for a job, it's like a, somebody just meeting me and being like, I don't know exactly what you're going to do but like we just want you to be part of this thing which is similar huh. to what happened at the assemblage. Um, Interesting. And so yeah, so that was really, um, yeah, so it was all over. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and so let's talk first about what is human design. First of all, I know you got a written up in Forbes magazine, so congratulations Thank about human you. design. That's really an yeah. awesome article. Um, I'll link to it so everyone can check it out. Um, yeah, what is human design and how did you become so engrossed in it? Like, yeah. What was it that really pulled you in? So human design is a system that basically gives us information about ourselves that we can't really access anywhere else. So it's really about our energetics and how we're each uniquely wired to operate. Um, and it's based on your exact time, date, and place of birth. And the idea is that human design is like a quantum system. So it brings together the I Ching and the Kabbalah and the chakra system with quantum physics and genetics and biochemistry all into one master system. And I think what pulled me into it is that when somebody first introduced my design to me, it was just like it resonated on such a deep level. and like gave me all the permission in the world to kind of be as like weird and unique as I was like it was like they introduced all these aspects and I'm like wow I'm operating so far away from that like yeah. I want to get back to that that feels like my nature and so like um, I think what drew me to it is that like human design is never about changing who people are it's just like giving themselves permission to be who they've always been and I think that like whether that's on the individual level or the relationship level or the team level it just like I think helps us um, find like a greater flow with ourselves and with the people that we're working with and the people that we're dating because it again like it's just revealing a different layer it's not just the stuff that we're conscious of and who we think we are but it's kind of our energetics and like the nonverbal impact we're having on the people around us so interesting yeah and I love how it mixes you know this ancient mysticism with all this modern day psychology yeah. and science that we're learning too that's what's so fascinating totally. to me about it as well yeah um, how do you incorporate human design assessments into your work as a leadership coach? So obviously you're digging into like the subconscious of people and, yeah. and um, you know, their personality and character makeup. Mm -hmm. um, how does that help in leadership coaching? Yeah, I think that like, again, it comes back to the permission piece. Is that like when I sit down with somebody, I'll look at like how are they uniquely designed to lead? 
You know, like, how are they really designed to lead a team? Like, are they designed to kind of be in the heat of it all? Are they designed to lead from the outside? Like, what are the biggest, like, distractions and areas that can take them off track? Like, are they more independent? Do they need to be more collaborative? So it just, like, gives them so much tactical information about, like, how they really can operate at their best. And again, with human design, like, I'm never telling people stuff they don't know. It's always stuff that they always recognize within themselves, but it's just, like, super freaky and very validating <laughs> to have, like, a stranger, like, reflect it all back to them. Right. Um, and so I think that it, like, really, you know, one example is I was working with two founders who, for those who know human design, one was a generator and one was a projector. Mm -hmm. And, like, they had become so frustrated because, like, they, like, were so different and they couldn't figure out their differences and, like, they wanted each other to be more similar than what they were and it was just, like not great right and so when we sat down we're like okay you are designed to like work in spurts you're designed to kind of lead from the outside like you're great speaking out about the brand but like you can't do all the work and like mm. you make decisions like that and then the other person was like you actually really are the hustler and the energy behind this brand and like you like it actually is going to like the longer days might look longer for you like you need a little bit more time when you make decisions so like it was just so revealing for them yeah. of, like again like how because again they were like oh my god that's like always what I wanted but like it just felt like it was wrong and so I think it really allows people to kind of step into a way of leading that feels more authentic and natural to them and I think it's very different than the approaches of many leadership coaches or evaluations that is like this is what worked for me it's going to work for you like these are the principles of leadership because I'm like I don't know what's going to work for you all I can do is like I can lay out your unique wiring and like give you the tools to experiment with it and only by doing that you'll really discover yeah. how it works that's so well put because when you did my design uh, analysis I felt like there were certain things that you pointed out that I was kind of like oh like of course like it makes so much sense but you know, when you're not cognizant of it or you're not, you know, aware uh, or paying attention to that aspect of yourself, it kind of just falls to the wayside and like, oh, like, you know, maybe I should be doing this or maybe I should be doing that. Mm -hmm. But when someone points it out to you, like, oh, of course, that's how I should be operating. It makes perfect sense. Totally. And you can actually take the steps to change that. Yeah. yeah. So cool. And the idea with human design is that it's all about like our uniqueness, is that right. we're all like super unique. And so it's just giving people permission to step into it. But often, like, we don't realize how unique we are. Like, we know yeah. our own experience. We're like, maybe everyone can do this. And it's like, no, no, this is your thing, you know? So I think, like, like kind of elevating that uniqueness and being like, you actually, like, are designed to do this and this is a major gift of yours, I think can be really exciting for people. Very, yeah. Um, how do you... Um, actually, so who are some of, like, your biggest clients? Are they one-on-one -on -one, um, leaders of companies? Are they entrepreneurs? Are they corporations? Yeah. It totally ranges, you yeah. know, like I see like many just individual people and like those people are like, I would say primarily women. <laughs> um, and there are people that are like just curious to learn more about themselves. They're often kind of in a transitional period of they've been working a job for a long time. Yeah. They're no longer inspired. They're like ready for the next thing and a step into their purpose. So like those people are just naturally going to be drawn to the system and like I love supporting them. Um, I also have like a much um, bigger, longer term mission of like how can I reach the people that would never find human design? And so that's why I love working with companies, where I was working with a company recently um, called Nutrafol, which is like a mm -hmm. hair product company, but they, um, there were 50 people on the team, so I sat down with the 50 people on their team, and like not one of them had heard of human design. And so like right. it's so special for me to be able to introduce that, because like it's so, again, like it just, it doesn't matter that it came from the stars because they just recognize it within themselves. And I also present it in a way that it's like, I'm not trying to convince you of anything. Like, yeah. take what you want, leave the rest. And they're like, this <laughs> is freaky and accurate. I'm like... I was going to say, were they just like blown away? They were, and it was amazing. Yeah. And so like, working in companies like that is so fun. And then I work with a lot of smaller companies. You know, I work with a lot of like, co-founders and partnerships and people that are like, just getting things off the ground and kind of want to engineer their teams like, intelligently from the beginning. And like, the, the only real unifying factor is that like the founders just have to be so bought in. So in the case of this company, like the founders, like they actually have been loving human design for years, and so they were just like ready to like bring it into a company Huge. context. It always so, starts with the leadership. It does. Yeah. So like it's just like if they're bought in, then like anything is possible. But it's like, um, you know, and that's just starting to take off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, how can understanding your own personal human design assessment help with 
personal life and business life? Like, how are they interconnected yeah. and how does it help you? Totally. I mean, so the principles in human design, they literally apply to every part of your life. And so that's what I love about going into companies. I'm like, okay, like, we're talking about this in the context of being here, but, like, this is true with your, like, partner and your kids and, like, your yeah. friendships. And so, like, there's often a lot of, like, instead of, like, oh, my God, all that stuff outside of it. So, like, I think that it again like I can think in, in my personal life like it's helped so you know with the assemblage we've done it for my whole team here and so like it's been amazing to know the the composition of my team to be like okay I have two manifestors I have one generator like I communicate with them differently knowing their designs mm. like I know some of them can make decisions like this I know some of them like are very emotional they need a lot more time I know that with my design I have a tendency to like put pressure on them or like when I'm stressed they can take it in so like oh. we've just really learned how to like dance around each other in a way that feels really in flow and then I think personally, like my um, romantic partner, like he is a very different design than me. He's a generator and like makes decisions through his gut response, like yeah. you. Um, whereas I'm deeply emotional, and so it's really shifted our di our relationship because like it's just given us a language and a framework to understand what's happening, what it is. And so like there are moments when I'm going through my emotional wave, and instead of him like taking that personally or taking it on, it's more just like you're gonna go through a wave like I'm gonna let you do your thing I'll like yeah. see you on the other side of it and so like and for him to also like for me to like leverage his gut response like leverage the fact that he can make decisions in the moment and for him to like really be patient with my emotional process so and like and also knowing my family like it's been so it's so funny my dad is a projector like me and like projectors basically their energy is a little bit more inconsistent okay. like sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not and we yeah. need a lot of time to rest and like generators have a little bit more like consistent energy and so yeah. like on family vacations it's always my dad and I and me and my dad who are just like stepping back we're like we're done we're gonna rest we're good and now I'm just like I get it you know like <laughs> not making ourselves wrong for that so yeah so it, it definitely applies to that was really helpful for like family gatherings like oh understanding God. each other on the holidays it's and all amazing that. everyone's like we're gonna go out my dad's like I'm not and I was like he's so good at being a projector he's You're way like, now I get yeah. it it's okay I'm not gonna push it exactly yeah, that's really cool um, what are some of the biggest challenges or obstacles that you've been able to help businesses mitigate by helping them understand their human design I think that like I think that when they, what I found is that like there's a lot of tensions or like challenging dynamics that kind of lay underneath the surface. Yeah. And so human design basically surfaces all those things. And so like I found when I work with people that they're able to kind of like work through interpersonal challenges so much quicker and therefore like focus on <laughs> the bigger things. Right. And so like, and once they have that clarity in their relationship that like shows up in their bottom line and in their efficiency and in all the things. Um, I also think that there is a lot of, there's a really cool quality of human design where like when you're engineering teams, you can like start to see where the gaps are and like where the gaps are is actually where all the energy goes. And so like I worked in a team where the thing that's been missing is the vision. Okay. So like all of our energy is like trying to figure out the vision. We can't figure out the vision. We're oh, just like wow. spinning, but we can literally bring in certain people that carry that quality and like all of a sudden it clarifies. And so like being able to leverage that and not like let those gaps take us down but more just be like oh we just need to bring in the right people to kind of like spark it in us right um and so i think that's been super useful and then another key piece is that like it's really i think it supports teams in really like allowing people to each be in, in their own lane in companies because like just for example like if i'm brought into a company and expected to operate more like a generator i'm not going to be very good at it right and so like allowing the people on my team to be manifestors and like initiate and be super independent like allow the generator to do all like the doing like me as a projector kind of leading from the outside like it just like it feels like there's so much less resistance mm. because like we are doing what we do best and we aren't expecting each other to be anything different than what we are have you ever taken on kind of like a like a human resources role for any companies i feel like you'd be a great person to uh to screen out uh candidates for yeah. positions there is like um People, t I haven't done that. I think yeah. there's a small company that I did that. She was said anyone she was considering hiring. Okay. Um, but like, there's some like laws. I think on like oh. a larger level about asking for the birth information. So. Oh so, right. So it's interesting. So that piece is like. Um, it's more once they're in house, then we can see how where they best fit. Oh, we gotta change that law. I That's know. Crazy. I know. It's so useful for the hiring stuff, and mm -hmm. I think that like it's been cool with the assemblage just begin with like doing the internal stuff because yeah. then you really start to see like what support you need. Yeah. So yeah, but the hiring stuff is like that is definitely an amazing application. I'm sure. But like it is just trying to figure out how to. Yeah. Some very progressive founders I've been able to do it with, but like the bigger companies, like there's gonna be a little bit more bureaucracy around it. Absolutely, I can see that. Um, what can a human design 
What can a human design assessment offer businesses and indiv indiv uh, individuals um, that tests like Myers-Briggs or DISC profile cannot? Yeah. So um, tests like Myers-Briggs or StrengthsFinder, um, it's all like often us answering questions based on who we think we are, who we aspire to be, and often the context will really change our answers. So like, yeah. we might go into a company and be answering all these questions in a very aspirational way because like we want to come off that way, and so. I think that stuff can be useful. I also, my experience with those systems, and I don't actually know DISC quite as well, is that like, often as, as interesting as the information is, it often doesn't give you that much to do with it, or like yes. how it applies to really working with other people and like what you can practice to kind of get more into alignment. Um, whereas with human design, it is based so much, it basically gives us access to not only like our conscious stuff, what we're aware of, but also all the unconscious stuff all the stuff that is like underneath the surface that is like our energetics all yes. that stuff that's at play and so like and then it gives us all these tools to kind of come back into alignment and then it gives us all this clarity about like what happens when partners come together what happens when small teams to come together when large teams come together so there's just like a much deeper level of information that i've experienced that is really resonant with people and they can't really access by taking a test on their own right that's the one problem i always had when i when i looked up my disc profile or the myers-briggs because you know they're basing all of that off of a survey that you're essentially giving them the information for so if you took a Myers-Briggs today versus a 10 years from today, you could get a totally different personality um, assessment from yeah. it, you know? I know, um, it, my Myers-Briggs is always changing. Yeah, and you know, if I have a bad day, maybe I think of myself differently, I answer the questions differently today than I do tomorrow. So that was always something that stuck out in my mind versus um, something like a human design assessment, which is so solid and totally. so, the things that you don't even want to know about yourself know. are there. And it's like, very ah. revealing. And I yeah. found that in partnership too, where it's like, like I said, it surfaces everything yeah. where I've worked with partners where like it wasn't working and then we did our session and like three weeks later they like ended things which like and I was like oh my god what did I do or like couples but like yeah. they're just like no like we knew all the stuff you validated you all the stuff we weren't it, yeah. gonna like hide from it anymore and I was right. like okay it's confronting the things that need to be confronted exactly. you know yeah. like that's uh that's part of the uh yeah part of the work that people need to do always have the hard conversations totally um, so for those who might be skeptical hearing words like astrology and Kabbalah and all these um, totally. ancient wisdoms that uh, human design uh, pulls from in a personality assessment, how would you explain the accuracy of the system? Because it is weirdly accurate. It's weirdly, you know? it's very scary. And accurate. modern science doesn't have a lot of yeah. technology or science um, that can explain it yet. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that there are some, uh, people who really understand maybe quantum quantum physics mm -hmm. and a little bit of neuroscience can kind of draw the mm -hmm. conclusions um, but most people haven't really dug that deep into those things um, how would you explain why it's so accurate I have no idea why it's so accurate <laughs> I feel like it's like a gift that we have which yeah. is just like all of a sudden like we get this like map it's like basically our operating manual which yeah. we like are not gifted when we're born um, I think like I love working with skeptics and I so support people being skeptical of the system I think that like it is, again, like what I emphasize is like, it's not a belief system. Like when I sit yeah. with somebody, I'm not trying to convince them of anything. Right. It's more just like, these are like some elements to play with and human design really just gives us a different lens through which to like observe our own life and like take the things that resonate, leave the rest. I've had a lot of experience with people being like, yeah, I, I remember a session with this one guy and he was just like, I don't like my design. And I was like, okay. I was like, how does it feel to operate like you are? Like in a way yeah. that it's really hard. I'm like, that's fine like yeah then stay in that but like the point is that like often when we are aligning with our design then like things flow a lot easier and like the experience of it is so much more enjoyable right it's not that we can't create things if like I'm operating like a manifestor or the projector but like it's never been fun when I tried yeah and so I think that like it just feels like a experimental thing to play with and right. so it's just like I feel like there's ways for me to enter and also for me like I always acknowledge the fact that it is literally nuts that it comes from our exact time, date, and place of birth. Yeah. It's not just like a, this is, it's like, this is amazing, but this is also crazy. Yeah. You know, and like, it honestly blows my mind, like, yeah. so much. And so I think when people can, like, like, resonate on that level where they're right. like, okay, you're not trying to, like, convince me of this thing. You think it's crazy, too. Like, <laughs> right. it, it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. I actually have, like, an entire scientific physics-based explanation for why I think it works. Oh I'll, my I'll spare God. you. I'll spare you. Gotta you tell me it. sometime. I'm done, yeah, we'll we'll have a coffee and I'll I'll unload on you because I, I'm the type of person my brain needs to back it up yeah. with like something concrete and I kind of 
feel like I understand it. Oh but my god! <laughs> conversation for another yeah. time. Um, so, what is your uh, personal goal or intention with this work that you do? I think that I think that human design really is the potential to just support people in aligning with their highest potential in all areas of their life, whether it's partnership or whether it's in business, and like. My goal is to really make human design as widely accessible and grounded as possible. And so, like, like I mentioned, to not only reach the people that are already attracted to the stuff and are like, I'm ready, but also to reach the people that would never touch this stuff. But yeah. like, but like, I think that it's presented in such a grounded way that it's actually like gives them like a foothold into like a whole new world. Yeah. And again, like working in companies and being like, okay, this is gonna actually make you a much better leader, but like it's also gonna make you a better parent and it's gonna also make you a better partner. And so I think that like yeah, my goal is just honestly to reach as many people in the most like accessible and grounded way because I think yeah. it's such a powerful tool and like really I want the people that are drawn to it and like open to it to like have ways to work with it because a lot of the information out there about it is not very accessible. It's super dense. And so I just think that there's actually a lot of new language that can like help people integrate it in, in new ways in their lives. Yeah, very cool. Um, do you have a regular ritual um, that you practice to keep yourself in alignment every day? I mean, you know, you do the coaching, you do the work here at the assemblage, you got a lot going on. What's yeah. your personal- In alignment with my design or just in general? Both actually, oh. yeah. Okay. I was going to say, in a line, well, whenever I do a session with somebody, I'll give them like a daily ritual and oh, like, okay. just like questions to ask themselves to be like, okay, how was I doing? So yeah. I think, um, so funny, someone asked me this yesterday and I was like kind of embarrassed by my answer, but I think that like, one, I just like generally take care of myself because I yeah. just know that I don't thrive as a projector, but also as a human if I don't. <laughs> and so like, I always sleep enough, you know, like I am try to always do my kundalini in the morning and I will always move my body yoga or yeah. cycling in some way um, how many hours of sleep do you get eight hours at least nice yeah but like I do better with nine hours that's yeah. usually like I a weekend a thing yeah. yeah but like eight hours and I wake up really early so I just like have to go to bed early as mm -hmm. well um and also just like taking care of my body and but also I'm learning to really just like rest when I need to I my biggest shadow in my design is a tendency to like push way too hard oh. and until I crash and so like um, but what I was sharing yesterday in this podcast interview is that, like, I also am very fortunate to have a partner that, like, really is a very strong mirror for me. And yeah. so, like, whenever I'm not trusting myself or, like, I'm not taking care of myself, like, he will call it out pretty immediately. Oh, that's And great. so, which is amazing. And sometimes I'm, like, not ready to hear it. I'm like, <laughs> But, like, most of the time it's so real, you know? Yeah. And so, like, and that is very, I haven't had that before in my life. And yeah. so, like it's really helpful because like the minute I get off track or making decisions from a place of fear or yeah. like I'm overworking myself and just like fried, like it's just like becomes so apparent even if I haven't totally noticed it yet myself. Um, so that's like a very helpful tool. So helpful for yeah. sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And what do you, how do you do Kundalini by yourself? How did you learn to do it yourself? So I fell in love with Kundalini a couple of years ago. Like, well, actually like five years ago, I started wearing all white and everyone's like, are you a Kundalini oh, teacher? And I, I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I would never do Kundalini. And then I loved Kundalini. And <laughs> um, I actually went through a teacher training with my partner last year okay. with this woman, Hari, who's amazing. And so. Oh yeah, Hari. Yeah. yeah. And so there are, I mean, with Kundalini, like there are Koreas that are like three minutes or like yeah. hours. And so like. I just try to do like 20 to 30 minutes in the morning. Okay. Yeah, by myself when there's like tons of books around it. But Kundalini is amazing. Nice. And like is a very fast acting tool. Yeah, there used to be a place in Soho. It was it Golden, Golden Bridge? Golden Bridge and it just closed. I know. I'd only gone once and I was so excited to start going. It's and then it amazing. Closed. I yeah. found that place and I started going every day. Yeah. Um, there's a new place in New York. There's Rama and then a new oh, studio. Oh, Rama Institute, right. A new studio just opened called Lumina. Lumina. Okay, yeah. cool. I'll have to check those out. Yeah. Then. <laughs> um, Erin, how do you measure success for yourself as an entrepreneur? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I think that like, right now how I measure success is that like, is it the impact of my sessions? Is that like if people are really like walking away with tools that they can use and like if it feels like a good investment for them and if it feels really helpful. I think that like we're still like very much in the beginning stages of human design kind of getting out to the mainstream but like I'm just working on like really nailing my presentation of human design so that it's like just the most 
valuable and the most impactful for people. Like, obviously, there's all the metrics of, like, being able to support myself and, you know, like, having all those offerings and, like, right. that's all happening. But, like, I think I really just want to make sure that my work is impactful. Yeah. And, like, right now, that's mostly anecdotal. Um, but I think that's just, like, really nailing that piece. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a huge impact. I mean, yeah. I think the more that people introspect and are able to know themselves, whether it's in a business context or not, I mm. mean, that's empowerment, you know, totally. in this definition, just yeah. understanding yourself in that way. No, and I, I had a couple of people yesterday and they were just like, after accepting their, you're just doing really important work. And I think yeah. for me, that was like the most important thing I could hear. I was just like, yeah. <sighs> You know, like, I don't know what it's all going to look like and where it's going to go, but, like, I do feel like it's really important. And, like, I absolutely yeah. think so as well. Yeah. And so I think having that validated was so, it's, like, moments like that that are just, like, keep going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so according to my analysis, I am a manifesting generator or an express builder. It's the same thing, right? Same thing. Okay. So I just wanted to ask you... So, um, in terms of that category, yeah. what are things that I should like look out for? Yeah. So for manifesting generators, like they really are the ones that really have like the energy and the life force to kind yeah. of like build and create and do things. And the most important thing is that they're really doing work that's deeply satisfying to them. And so I think like as you kind of embark on this next phase in your life, it's really just paying attention to like what in my life is like energizing me and pulling me towards it and giving me life and what are the things yeah. that are really pulling it away because like for manifesting generators especially like their career path might look a little bit less linear it's mm -hmm. more just like I have the energy for this and I have the energy for this because their gift is in bringing things to life very quickly and efficiently yeah so I would just honor what you really have the energy for and like let go of the things that you don't and also allowing it to be like a, a couple different things and that's okay too very true and <laughs> very very much something that's taken me a long time to uh, feel comfortable with. So totally. it's great to hear that validation Good. for sure. Um, and the last question that I'd like to leave everybody with, or no, I'll ask for one more. Um, how do you see the world evolving from your vantage point, um, let's say 10 years from now? And um, how do you still see yourself contributing to it? I think that like, and I'll keep it through the lens of human design because yeah. I, I just think that like there is, I mean, when I first started studying human design, no one uh, that I was around knew about it. Only when I was like traveling to like places like Ibiza and Kauai would anyone be familiar. Oh, really? It was yeah. like such a radical thing. And now it's like I hear people talking about it behind me in the line. It's just like it is reaching like s such a greater so great. level of awareness. And so like I would love, and like the founder of human design always used to say, he's like, human design really is not for the adults like it's really for the kids okay like it's amazing to be introduced to human design at our age and we're like, right. just like okay now we have to do the work to like make sure we've deconditioned from everything and like step into this but like yeah. as kids when you start being like parented in ways that support your design oh. from the get-go i think it's just the most profound and so i think that like how i would love to see it evolve and the way that it really feels like it's evolving is like really allowing human design to just like be the operating manual for people and just like giving people a blueprint so they kind of really feel that permission to be who they are from the minute they enter this earth right and so like i would love to see that and i think in terms of my role in contributing it to it is like really just like oh. doing the work of um of packaging it in a way that is so accessible and grounded and applicable to people um and just like creating very sort of interactive ways for people to engage with it and really integrate it into their day-to-day -day. so beautiful I think we're on the way. Okay, good. <laughs> um, and lastly, what's a valuable piece of advice you would like to give to share with other professionals or other entrepreneurs creating their own businesses committed to some sort of conscious intention? I think that I think that like fear is always going to be part of it. I think that like I. Um, I was actually so scared to like start my own practice again because I had I had a practice with somebody else oh, like okay. three years ago and yeah. like it was it was great and it was really challenging yeah and so when I was starting my own practice I just had so much doubt about whether or not I could actually do it yeah and like again my partner was just like I mean are you gonna choose from fear here or are you gonna just like trust and so I think that like I, so many of the things that have emerged since I launched my own practice have just come from this like place of like utter trust and surrender and so like the fear is always going to be there but just like not allowing that to dictate your decisions and what you're choosing and I find like this year has been so weird where like whenever I have moments of like real self-doubt or like comparing myself and just like not yeah. thinking I'm enough like I go through this whole process and then like so much more opens up 
Yeah. And it just feels like this natural flow that I kind of have to go through this thing, move through it, and then like I'm on a new a new stage or a new something. And so like um, I, it's all around just for me like trusting and like really surrendering my mind to my body and just kind of like letting it flow even if I have no idea how it's going to look or yeah. where it's going to take me. Surrender. That's great advice. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here, Erin, and so fun. for all the work you're doing. It's so inspiring. Yes, good. Such a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Of course.